What's going on everyone? Thank you so much for coming back to my channel. My name is Johnny Noenko. I am a fashion, an aspiring fashion entrepreneur, fashion stylist, fashion shopper, all that jazz. In my last video, I talked about London Fashion Week and the different shows that I found very fascinating just based on the trends that are going on in the industry, the different designers that are doing amazing stuff in the industry, and just mainly things that I really enjoyed about those shows. Um, I listed out five different designers that really caught my eye, that really captivated me in terms of just style aesthetic, design, silhouette, creativity, things like that. So now we're talking about Milan Fashion Week. Milan Fashion Week ended just yesterday and Milan is in Italy. Italy is known for its really high tailoring, high craftsmanship, um, very luxurious fabrics, luxurious fits, things like that. A lot of people that I know personally want to buy an Italian made suit or an Italian made dress. So it just has a lot of that rich history, rich heritage where it's associated with just get with just high tailoring and craftsmanship. So now I wanted to list out my favorite top five Milan designers or Italian designers that showed their collection in Milan Fashion Week. It's not in any chronological order like I said before. It's just based on what I liked and what captivated me. And maybe you guys want to know more about what's going on in Milan and maybe you didn't know what's going on in Milan or what other designers are out there other than the designers that you guys normally look at and Milan's a great place for that. Milan has a lot of really cool designers that are very underrated that I feel like just need that little you know push to kind of get people to kind of look at them. So like I said um, I hope you guys enjoy and stay tuned. So the first designer that I'm going to talk about is Jill Sonder. I have always followed Jill Sonder. I've known about Jill Sonder for the longest time, but I never really looked at Jill Sonder as like a brand that um, I really enjoy watching. I always thought it was very minimal, very minimalistic. While I do like minimalistic styles and silhouettes, I just thought it was just very much that avant-garde, minimal, very monochrome. It was just not a, a brand that I personally would be interested in. But then I saw this collection and I was just like blown away just by the detail and the craftsmanship, just the art behind it all. The designers really spent their time really um, doing a lot of their research, really just creating an aesthetic that fits them, but also fits the brand itself. I really liked how I wouldn't say it was minimalist, but it was very much a pure collection, pure in terms of just how an Italian or a European woman would wear. Nothing over embellished, not, not a lot of strong colors, just very clean, very sleek, and just very white. <laughs> There's a lot of white um, looks, but also black, and I like how the designers implemented different neutral tones, pale blues, things like that. A lot of the silhouettes were a lot of suiting. I love a woman in a suit. I think that's one of the most powerful ensemble that a woman could wear, just because as a man, I definitely like wearing suits, especially when I go out to an event or if I need to wear a suit for this thing. Seeing another woman in a suit, that just kind of shows that she's very much interested in elevating her style, looking like she's a million bucks, just really changing the way or changing the, the landscape of what fashion is. It doesn't have to be just women in dresses, men in suits. It can be a combination of things. It can be women in dresses with a blazer on or just women in a suit, but also has some type of feminine aspect to it. So a little bit of like an androgynous look. Jill Sander also has a lot of really amazing, amazing coats. Like, I love just how oversized and very comfortable the coats are. They're very dress-like. You can wear it with the dress or without a dress. And the pure elegance that comes with the collection in general. It was just very, very much an elegant collection. Very simple, like I said, very sleek. Just something that I feel like a lot of women here in America, as well as European women, would definitely want to buy, definitely want to wear. In particular, I really love the detailing that goes into a lot of the designs that Jill Sander has done, uh, the designers of Jill Sander. There's a lot of like interesting pleating, interesting embroideries that are in the fabrication. Really, really great. Um, techniques that have been in implemented into collection, as well as the different fabrications. A lot of it is like really cool wools, really soft Chanel blouses, dresses. There's a lot of cashmere that I feel cashmere is one of the top 
fabrics that you can put in any coat, any collection. And I feel like Josanda really did a great job at just really showcasing that and really putting that into the collection and showing that they're just not a minimalist brand, but they're more than that. They're more than just being that minimal clothing line. And I think what the, the designers did to amplify it is really, really amazing, really great. When I saw it, when I first saw the first look and just saw the aesthetic of it all, I was just like, wow, this is amazing. I really was dropped. I my jaw literally just dropped. Also in the last in the last couple looks, there's this one look that I felt like was super elegant. Just a draped stole around the woman in knit dress or some pants and a suit. Like it just looked purely elegant. And I really, really, really enjoyed it. And I think for me, moving forward, I'm going to look at Jill Sonder in a different way because before, I didn't see it in that way. It was just really a small, boring brand. And now it's, to me, after this collection, I really enjoyed what they had to offer. So the second brand that I want to talk about is Imerno Shavino. I've been following Imerno Shavino for the longest time and I really just love the way that he kind of modernized women. I really like the way that he kind of combines couture and ready-to-wear designs and techniques and kind of creates this new technique that's called or that he classifies as couture pret -a which is Pret-a-porter -pret means ready-to-wear in French and I just really like those designs and techniques that he does. I think he's great at really making that model woman elegant, really sophisticated, but also not too sophisticated or not too frumpy, but mostly sexy. Very, very sexy looks, very, very um, form-fitting looks. Um, I think he's just really good at really knowing what women want to wear, especially in the modern age, especially in the millennial age what women want to wear and how they want to look and how they want to present themselves to the world. So one of my favorite looks from his collection is this full yellow ensemble. It has a sweater knit that has Swarovski crystals around the neckline, which is super cool, super dope. I've never seen something like that before. I didn't even know you can embroider crystals to a knit. And I think what he does is just really masterful, very amazing. He has such great technique. Um, another one that I really like is that he added a lot of Swarovski crystals or a lot of crystallized elements to the suits that he has. Um, like if you see it in the light, it glistens, it's very, very sparkly, very glamorous. Like one of the suits that he put on is basically a yellowish, goldish suit. And it, once you see it in the light, it's really like sparkly, like it just blinds you. It's just a really, really beautiful look, very amazing. I also really like the last look that he did, which is like a lace type of dress or like an embroidered eleganza type dress. It's very, you can feel very naked, but it's also covered with like a slip. So that way um, things are not showing. <laughs> but I really like that look. I think it's very sexy, very elegant. I really think Hermano Shavino is really doing a great job at just kind of showing the modern age women and showing what fashion should be, should look like in this modern age and how to really attract those millennial Gen Z customers. I think he has this high price point, which is very couture, which is, but it's not couture, it's kind of ready to wear, but I think it kind of melts together and just creates a really cohesive and really interesting look. I love the color palettes. The color palette is a little bit like darker, but he also has a little like vibrancy to it. So he has like a vibrant yellow, a really dark um, green, dark burgundy, but he also has a really red look, this red look from, or this um, suit that's kind of like a red orange that looks like it's a uh, suede or probably like velvet. Beautiful, like showstopper, like you're gonna be the talk of the town once you are walking in that or wearing that. So I just really like what Rena Shavino's doing and I can't wait to see more from him. So the third designer that I really want to highlight is Antonio Murray. Now, Antonio Murray been around for the longest, but I feel like he's very underground. A lot of not a lot of people know about him. He's not necessarily sold in a lot of stores that you would know of, like Neiman's or Saks or Barney's or well, not Barney's anymore, but Bergdorf's things. You know those types of brands. Even Netta Porter doesn't have him. I was just so surprised by that. But I mean, some brands, they usually either opt out of being wholesale or they just have their own store. And I noticed that he has a lot of his own stores. But anyways, I digress. Um, I really like Antonio Murray because he just has a story. He, with his collection, he always presents a specific story, a specific theme. And 
with this collection, there's a theme to it. It, some, it seems like it kind of reminds me of like that nomadic look, you know, just traveling all over the world, not really having a specific home. Kind of similar to like a pirate look. You'll see there's this one look that I saw in the collection that really reminded me of like Jack Sparrow, but in a woman form. Just amazing, amazing designs. Great, great applications in terms of just like appliques, embroideries. I also like the different textures and textiles that he used. I think one of my favorite looks was this skirt that was made out of this like rabbit fur or maybe it was like a faux fur and then he added a it was like draped to the side while the others were like made of silk and things like that it's that is like really cool really masterful to me i think that the collection has a specific point of view that maybe not a lot of people understand but they look at it as a form of art and for me i look at it as a form of art especially for the men i think a lot of the men's clothing that i see on the in the collection i would want to wear i love white leg pants i love drop crotch pants i love the suiting i love the tailoring the shirt's definitely going to be a hit sell because you know with a luxury brand like that a lot of people who want to spend a certain amount of money are going to go for the t-shirts the embroidered t-shirts themselves and I just like his way of designing. Like it's similar, it's kind of similar to Emmanuel Shavino where his design and his aesthetic is very much crafty and very artisanal. Um, and Tony Murray is the same, very much crafty, very much artisanal. A lot of it is, must have been hand sewn by his team and just created to look like it was a couture piece. Um, and I just really enjoy the collection. I just really like how he kind of ties it to his own masterful roots in terms of his heritage, where he's from, as well as just having a storyline of whatever story or whatever thing he wants to portray. And I think his collection really did it for me. After seeing it all, just going down the runway and just kind of being mesmerized by everything that he has to offer, I was just like, that's really cool. Like, the, if if they sell in any store, or if I can buy it online, I definitely want to buy his collection. Now, the fourth brand that I really enjoyed was Moschino. Moschino is one of those heritage brands like Chanel and Dior that has a great point of view, great designs, great looks, but it kind of like died down and then recently or maybe maybe a few years ago five years ago six years ago it's kind of been coming back up as this amazing design house and it's being creative directed by jeremy scott and i love jeremy scott i think he's a great designer he has such a great point of view in terms of fashion he doesn't take it too seriously but he loves and he loves to have fun with it there's always a theme to his collection and this collection there was a huge theme it was very marie antoinette I, and i love that story because i did a research paper on marie antoinette when i was in college and just learning about it and kind of seeing the different styles and codes and also if you watch the movie Marie Antoinette with Kirsten Dunst, it kind of resembles that same aesthetic. He kind of changed it in a way where it's not like a full on petticoat type gown, but it's kind of like short and it's very much mini fit. And I think that's really, really cool how a lot of his looks or a lot of the looks in this collection kind of resemble that aesthetic with the over coiffed hair, the embroideries and appliques on the corset and just that mini skirt that you know, that's really over embellished to create white hips. And I really enjoyed what he had to show on this collection. I think this collection is really cute, very cheeky, very fun. Definitely more of like a marketing tool than I would say he's trying to sell product. Maybe some of these collections, maybe some of these looks he would sell product, but it's definitely a marketing tool to kind of uplift the brand. There are a lot of really cool elements to it that I think a lot of customers would want to buy. Like they have really cool bodysuits, um, the jeans look amazing, the shoes, shoes look perfect. Just the color scheme in general. And then at the end, he kind of showcased something very unique, like a costumey type look where the um, models are dressed like cakes. And if you watch Marie Antoinette with Kirsten Dunst, you'll see that her character loves sweets, loves shopping, loves 
extravagant, lavish lifestyle, mostly sweets because you'll see her just eating a lot of cakes and a lot of all that stuff. So I guess he used that idea from the movie or even just by reading about Marie Internet and kind of implemented it into his collection. I, pure genius. Really loved it. Really enjoyed it. I think he's just, he has such a really great creative mind that it allows him to take risks and really go in on what he's thinking without having to dial down on it. And I think that's what makes him one of the best designers in the world. He just has this idea of just implements it to perfection and just doesn't back down, just wants to showcase what is, what is in his head and really give his point of view on what fashion should be, which should be fun. It shouldn't be taken seriously. It shouldn't be just about, you know, sending a dress down the runway for it to sell. It should be about sending looks and creating a fantasy that a lot of people want to look at and a lot of people want to dream about because in the world that we live in now, you know, you need that fantasy to kind of like alleviate all the tension that's going in. So. I really like this collection. It was really, really amazing. And I just, you know, and I hope whatever goes into Moschino, whatever goes on, I just hope that they continue down this path because it was just masterful. Really enjoyed it. So the last designer, or the fifth designer, that I want to talk about is Hugo Boss. Hugo Boss is a German brand, but they're showing in Milan, Italy. Now, I love Hugo Boss because I think they are really good at just creating those power suits, those easy, great staples. Um, it's very, very simple in terms of design aesthetic. You can see that they just have coats, scarves, dresses, blouses, trousers. But I also really think the color scheme in general for this collection in particular was really, really great. I love how vibrant and just lustrous each piece was. The beautiful hues in the, co in the color scheme, just kind of going down the runway, it was just magical. I think what makes Hugo Boss so successful is just how exceptional the tailoring is and just how exceptional the standard of how they want their men and women to look like and how they want them to dress. I think that's what makes them really, really successful and just it's able to fit anyone. Like anyone could wear it um, and it's easily tailored. You can easily tailor it in any type of way. And I think what it's doing for women, I think before it was more popular for men, but now that they have a women's wear line, they're able to kind of really play with it, really showcase, you know, use the same aesthetic that they use for men, but implement it for the women. I really love women who are in um, power suits, who wear suits or suit-like ensembles. And I think what they do is they kind of play with that idea, you know, because nowadays, like I said, women are wearing suits and that's what they want to wear. That's how they want to look. And I think they just kind of use that to their advantage because they know that they're a suit-making company, especially, you know, with their men's wear line. And they want to implement that with their women's wear line. And I think that's what I like about Hugo Boss. They're not, they're not like these top luxury brands they're very very much accessible but they still have this luxury to it that you'll look at it and be like oh wow that's actually like it feels like high end but it's like what 300 bucks 500 bucks you know compared to a ten thousand dollar gown or a ten thousand dollar garment like I love, I think Hugo Boss just knows how to really perfect their craft and really just create looks that fit within the boundaries of what their aesthetic is. And I think the designers are doing a great job of doing that right now. My, one of my favorite looks actually, um, there was this really beautiful like orange or red coat that just that came down the runway and it was paired with like another, like a similar orange or red trousers and I was just like, oh wow, like. I would wear, I actually would want to wear that. Like, I actually really do want to wear that because it's, I'm very much like, I like the vibrancy, man. I like how, how you can stand out in a coat like that. You know, seeing that and seeing that look, I was just like, wow. And like, orange pants, like, no guy would wear orange pants, at least not that I know in my personal life who would wear orange pants. So seeing that and like, just seeing, how like vibrant and lustrous it look. It just looks amazing, especially with this one guy who's wearing orange pants and a deep red sweater. Perfect, amazing look. Just how it fits him perfectly and just how colorful it is. It's just a great, great collection. Back. So thank you so much again for watching this video. If you've enjoyed this video, please like and comment. Tell me what you think about the collections. Let me know what you're feeling. If there's any other designs that you felt like you liked more, let me know. I would love to have that conversation with you so that way we can, you know, just bounce off each other on what brands are doing it for us and what brands are not. Please subscribe if you haven't already and click that bell button so that way you can get notified of more videos that I will be rolling out in the next few weeks. Do let me know 
know what you think of this video and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Hope you guys have a good one. Peace.